Okay, welcome to MTG Pro Tutor. I am Sean Penrod, your host, and we are going to dive into this M15 booster pack and evaluate the cards inside. This is the last week of M15, so let's see what we get. I take out the marketing card, which is a token today, the land card, which is an island, and the rare. Yes! I love this card. Spectral Ward is hands down uh, first pickable. I will definitely first pick Spectral Ward, and then what I'm looking for is a Heliod's Pilgrim or two, and definitely a Boon Weaver Giant. Those cards are going to make the deck come together. In this format, you pretty much, if you can resolve Spectral Ward, you are going to win. You are going to have protection from all colors. This is amazing. All right. Uh, the creature gets plus two, plus two, and protection from all colors. You will eventually win. Um, just make sure that, uh, I mean, if you're at like one life, uh, and they have like three attackers, and you only have one thing, then you, okay, you'll probably, prob probably lose. But if you have a good board state, and you resolve Spectral Ward, you will win. So the way, you, you have to be careful that you don't... Um, cast it and then they kill your creature in response so be careful that they don't have any mana up um, you know that they don't have like a, a burning anger or just so, something like that okay just be careful because if, if this gets countered then you are SOL but it is so strong and I love the art I think it's so beautiful um, I, I'm really excited to have Spectral Ward as our first pick again you definitely want to back it up with some Helia Pilgrims which uh, you can play on turn two and get the Spectral Ward in your hand. You do have to reveal it, so your your opponent will know it's coming. Uh, or you can do a Boon Weaver Giant, which does cost seven, and he'll dig through your library, pull it out, and attach it to a uh, Spectral Ward to to uh, to himself. So that that's game winning right there. I love Spectral Ward. What a great card. Research Assistant is a nice one three for two, so it kind of blocks. Uh, the tokens on the ground, some early aggressors, and then later on in the game, when you have extra mana, you can loot, draw a card, then discard a card for four mana. So Thundering Giant is a 4-3 haste for five mana. Ephem Ephemeral Shields temporarily makes your creature indestructible to end the turn, so it can win combats that it otherwise would not have won. Coral Barrier is an excellent blue card, a 1-3 three for 3 mana that makes a 1-1 one, one squid with Island Walk. This is this has proven to be great uh, for Convoke, uh, for chump blocking, for just uh, blue control decks that want to last longer and push the game into a parody situation. Accursed Spirit, 3 to Intimidate for 4 mana. Flush to Dust, destroy target creature, it cannot be regenerated for 5 mana, excellent removal. Remo removal is at a premium and limited. You want to pick up some form of removal early because if you don't have any, your opponents will and they will wipe your board clean. Crippling Blight, minus one, minus one, until and, and can't block. So, I mean, this could wipe out, uh, you know, it could take out a Typhoid Rat, it can take out an Elvish Mystic, um, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna main deck a Crippling Blight. Maybe if I had nothing else better to play, like at all, this would be my 23rd card. But Evolving Wilds, if you are running two colors and you have uh, a spell in each color that has two mana symbols, then you want at least one Evolving Wilds because you, you never know when that uh, when you're just gonna get hosed and you need that that other that second mana of whatever color to cast your spell. Unmake the Graves gets your bombs back if they ever make it to the graveyard through discarding or milling or dying. So I don't mind having one. Um, maybe not main decking it, but uh, but I don't mind having one. So Living Totem has uh, been all right. It has Convoke, and when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on another target creature. <laughs> Military Intelligence, if you attack with two creatures, you draw a card. Leeching Sliver is alright. It's it's actually terrible. <laughs> uh, I thought it was Venom Sliver. Leeching Sliver, is there's no need to play it. I mean, when a sliver you control attacks, if any player loses one life, you don't have enough slivers to make this ability relevant. So, uh, yeah. 
not so much on the leeching sliver. Reclamation Sage. When Reclamation Sage enters the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. This is one of four ways to destroy an artifact or an enchantment. Um, or rather, one of four ways to destroy uh, uh, an enchantment in M15. Three of the ways are green, one of the ways is white, and this comes in the form of a 2-1. Uh, so, I don't know if... It's alright to have, but I'm not, I'm not going to pick it highly, um, just because there aren't that many artifacts and enchantments running around that you're going to want to target. Sometimes you really are going to want to get rid of a Stab Wound or a Caustic Tar, um, so it might be alright to have one of these in your deck, but you don't need to pick it highly, I don't think. Alright, so definitely going in on the Spectral Ward. Second pick would probably be... Ooh, Flesh to Dust. Yeah. So, Spectral Ward and then Flesh, Flesh to Dust are the top in this in this pack. So, there you have it. Take the Spectral Ward, look for Heliod's Pilgrims, Boonweaver Giants, and uh, other ways to, you know, to last until you can draw this card and resolve it, because you will win. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love doing these for you. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And we will, you know, get better together. I'm Sean Penrod, and we'll see you in the next draft.